to the CHGO White Sox Podcast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio B of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson, the host of the CHGO White Sox Podcast. Alongside me is Vinny Duber. Follow him on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. He's got a brand new post up at allchgo.com, talking about everybody's favorite Leary Garcia uh, and the 26 man uh, spot on that roster. Will it be Leary? Hanser Alberto is looming in the shadows with an apple. Uh, you know, he's uh, he, he's real excited. Uh, you Kevin, didn't see the TikTok. I know you didn't. No, I don't no, know didn't. about it's TikTok. Right. But uh, our, our our guy, Kevin Kaduck, uh, once I alerted everybody that uh, the story was up this morning, uh, he responded to me, you know, oh, everybody's got uh, Hanser Alberto mania. And I go, well, we're going to need to brand that a little bit better. It either has to be Hanserama. <laughs> or Alberto Palooza. So let's Ooh. let's figure that out. I, I think I'm partial to Hans Arama, to be quite honest. But. I like Alberto Palooza because yeah. it's Chicago and it kind of rolls, I feel, a little bit better. Herb? Uh, You're the time-breaking boat here. I like the Hans Arama. <laughs> really? Yeah. Sarah? It's a very unique name that no one will mistake Hans who it Arama. is. Hanser. Like, I like it. Okay. Yeah, How many okay. Hansers do you know? <laughs> I, I, I know one, and his name's Hans or Alberto. Okay. I have um, nothing against it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I, I'll 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 make all the Alberto Palooza hats and keep them myself. <laughs> there you go. Um, that's Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. On today's show, we will be talking about who will hit the most home runs for the White Sox in 2023. Uh, a rough subject uh, in 2022. But it's a new year. It's a it's a new time to be uh, delusional and predict. Stay, stay tuned to see if we will pick seven guys to hit twenty home <laughs> runs like we did a year ago. We just might. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll also talk about some promotions because uh, the White Sox announced uh, one today that will be very interesting for fans uh, that are going to Tuesday games. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the bobbleheads. Uh, we got some, th- I think, three that have been uh, announced so far. So we'll preview that for you and uh, talk about the bobbleheads because uh, last year was a pretty pretty decent year. For the bobblehead, you had the nice Liam one, the the Aloy Luis gold glove one. That's that was, an all timer. That's, that that's one. a great one. The yeah. Tim Anderson hand shaking mm-hmm. bobblehead. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a classic and a new one. So, uh, uh, real excited for the ones in, in twenty twenty three. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. You got an icebreaker, Herb, though, because and you got to tell it to Vinny because again, he's not on TikTok. Okay. Um, the main TikTok question was: Could you, as just guy that you are, guy or girl that you are? Enter into a NFL game at the beginning and complete ten yards of passing total for the for the game. You cannot throw screen passes. You cannot throw shovel passes. And I'll include no like lateral passes. Nothing behind the line of scrimmage. I on Twitter said no. Or do you think it will be easier for you to do that? The ten yards in a total game. So that's all you got to do. So one yard and do that ten times for the total game. Or Hit a ball in fair territory versus a major league baseball pitcher. Which one do you think you can do easier? I know neither of us can do either of those things, but which one would be easier? Yeah, the answer is neither. Those are yeah. those are two things that I would never be able or allowed to even <laughs> attempt. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would have to say that the, the the football one strikes me as the easier thing to do again. Not that it's easy, but easier of the two, uh, probably just because you could have you, you get the assistance of an NFL offensive line and an NFL wide receiving core to kind of help you out with that one. Whereas if you go up, if you go up there trying to hit a 99 mile an hour fastball, that's all on you. Now maybe 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 a, a, a pitcher would take pity on you and and lob you in some some more batting practice friendly uh, pitches, but uh, I would have to say the the. The former would be easier, even though there's still zero percent chance that I could get it done. It's a team sport. I got I got a coach to coach me. I got a quarterbacks coach. I got an offensive coordinator to coordinate the plays. All we got to do is throw a slant ten yards. I mean, even then, it could just be a three step drop. I got to be real quick. Um, if no one's open, I'll chuck it to the sidelines. I'm not afraid. I can have thirty incompletions. I just got to have ten yards. Remember, you're um, five nine too. I can throw <laughs> jump passes. I'm five it's ten okay. too. So that that's half of my problem. Drew Brees did it. Yeah, he was actually good, though. And Russell Wilson does it. Yeah, good play. These good guys are into the Hall of Fame, Sean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Kyler Murray is small. <laughs> yeah. Kyler Murray can hit a, a, a fastball and also uh, also throw 10 yards. Um, I would just say that I think the game planning part, and again, you just have one job, throw the ball. 
it, it's a lot easier than hit the ball because you have to have eye coordination. You have to be able to, you know, line up 90 miles per hour. You have literally the blink of an eye to do it. You have to judge spin where if it's going to be a ball or a strike or not. All I have to do is just look at my first read, and if it's not there, I'm throwing it as far as I can. And I don't care if it's intentional grounding. Who cares? Well, and you get uh, <laughs> a game's worth of attempts, right? Right. Yes, Whereas, do. theoretically, you would only have one to four at-bats uh-huh. worth of attempts in in, uh, in, a, in a Major League Baseball game. I would like to think that if, let's say, I threw 30 or 40 passes, uh-huh. uh, all of them wobbly, uh, I would like to think that an NFL level wide receiver would be able to do something to haul one of those in. There's defenders going to get you guys. You guys know that, right? Yes, yeah, right. So yeah. there's, uh, they're all coming at you, and then they're man, playing man coverage again. Herb, Boy. that's what this is an impossible thing yes. to do. It's just what <laughs> I'm saying. I could, I think I could technically, if I had Ford bats, and he was, if a pitcher was smart, he wouldn't throw a, a Joe a curveball. Like our fastball, he would just throw curveball junk because I will be gearing up for fastballs, and initially I would strike out. But otherwise, I would just if he's throwing just fastballs, I'm putting my bat out there, see if I can just hit it. But you have to, so you have to hit it. You have to make contact. No, you don't have to get a hit. Okay. You have to put it in fair territory. So if fouling off a pitch does not count, it, it does not count. So Hunting fair. If you just hit tip the ball and it lands in fair territory, that's your thing. I can virtually guarantee you, you would not be able to bunt. Successful. No, I wouldn't yeah. want to, but I would just put my bat out there and like, please hit it, and he would throw a curveball. I, yes, he would strike me out in the four attempts, but I think I would have an easier time, more of an opportunity because it's just me there, me versus him. You are you are picking the baseball. I'm what? picking the baseball. No I know chance. baseball is harder, and <laughs> hitting a baseball is oh. probably the hardest thing you can do in professional sports. But I don't have to depend on anybody else. My throw, I would. I suck. want to depend on somebody. Right. No, no, my throw, no, my throw would suck. It would hit firstly the back helmet of my <laughs> offensive lineman. If not that, the defensive lineman would block it and or intercept it. Then the linebacker would block it and or intercept it. Then the quarterback would jump my route. Like they wouldn't. They know that you can't throw twenty yards down the field. So they're playing man up. They got safeties are up. They're covering you because they know you don't have an arm. You're over with the pitcher. At least I say. I can get lucky. I don't need to get a hit. I just need to put this some bitch in play somehow. It would be hard as hell, but I think that's easier for me than the actual throwing. Maybe it's because of me. I can't throw. It sounds like Jason Garrett's my offensive coordinator. It sounds like I'm just screwed. Cause like, what? it's like, I don't know. I, 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 I think, I think most people agree with you. Jared agrees with you. Uh, Mando. I think, no, not Mando. Somebody else got uh, Cortese. Uh, the numbers make sense just to me. Um, 35 passing attempts is pretty much a normal game for a quarterback. You have to have basically two attempts for that go right because that's like five yards a pass, you assume. I could throw the ball five yards. Um, that's 5.7% of my attempts need to be good. Baseball, what, you're getting 12 pitches? It's 8%. Like you have to, on one of 12, you have to, you know, make contact. I can't do that. No, I, and I also think, too, that you could, they could draw up some ridiculously goofy play where, where someone would be guaranteed to be open. Right. Right? So all you got to do is just blah, you know, just get rid of the ball can like that way and someone there, will catch it, right? <laughs> can you Because they'll be there. wide open. NFL, <laughs> NFL windows close quickly. Yes, he'll be open for that <laughs> second. When you recognize he's open, he's he's not open anymore. Pretend you the gotta, ball's, pretend <laughs> you're playing hot potato. Get it and blah, get rid of it right away. <laughs> It works. Now, <laughs> two of those have to go well for you. Now, I you know, those, it's not not it's not don't throw 30 interceptions challenge. It's just throw 10 yards. The more dangerous thing I think is baseball. Even though you might get hit in football, I might get hit in the face in baseball or in the ribs or in the leg. All those things are exposed. At least in football, they have protections for me as a quarterback. And also, I'm throwing the ball immediately. I'm not looking First, second, third progressions. <laughs> Somebody's like, check down. Check down. How, how are you going to check down? You're doing that thing in Madden where you zoom out, you read the play, you pick exactly who you're throwing to, and you just wait two seconds. Circle. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a question for you guys. Would you rather, or not would you rather, can you throw a football 10 yards, or can you throw a baseball 60 feet, basically 30 yards? Like, which one is easier for you? Basically, Wait. could you throw a pitch from a mound? Yeah. Or could you throw a ball 10 yards? No defenders. And it doesn't even have to be a strike. No, just no and defenders. It doesn't even have to be complete. Which one's easier? Just, just the a, baseball. Very, a very baseball. basic. The baseball's baseball. easier. Yeah, just get the baseball that far. 
It doesn't need to be in the zone no. or even close. But you just have to get the football 10 yeah, yards. I can throw a baseball 60 feet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I can throw a football 10 yards. There's no, but the that's the, the thing. It's like, there's no defenders. You just have to throw just it. throw it and 10, it just hits the ground. Which one is easier? Uh, the baseball. Because it's more yeah. uniform feel. It's small. It's, it fits in your hand. The football is oblong. It's, you, you can throw it all weird. The wind could catch it real quick. Well, I was thinking that too. Think about like physics. Like a football, if you throw it the wrong way, the wind, it, it won't go as far. Yeah. At least, you know, cylinder. Perfect conditions. You guys, we are all average <laughs> Joes. Basic thing. Baseball. Just throwing a football You're not yards. asking me to throw somebody out at home plate from right field. You're just asking no. me to throw it to home plate and it just hits the ground. Ceremonial first pitch. Could you, yeah. could you throw it to the catcher on, the, on a fly? Not even like accurately. See, would it just like that, not like bounce in front of home plate? Yeah, that changes yeah, the dynamic all, of it because oh you're elevated on the mound and you probably are in front of a bunch of people. On the first pitch, right? So that's a different thing. Well, you see a, how many people do that and how many people dirt those or throw it way over people's But they're hats. trying to throw pitches. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. You just got to play catch, and you probably screw it up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be uh, Nolan Ryan. You said like I can't 55. dirt it, right? Just, I got to I gotta at least meet, read the catcher. I would dirt it every time. Just throw it in, on a, in the air. Hey, just South, just South, throw, Herb, Southpaw's got you. Yeah, throw, Southpaw's throw, got you. Throw, throw, you know, <laughs> Tim Anderson a pop-up behind a uh, home plate. Um, anyways. Like 50 Cent, be on the right field uh, line stuff. I'm like, we're going home. I Sorry, I went the wrong way, guy. <laughs> I tried hitting a, a baseball in a, a batting cage. It was going like 90, and it yeah. hurt my hand. And you like, did I, it, I, though, I can't, right? No, I made like contact. Yeah. I, I made. I put it, it like fair? foul. No, I couldn't uh, even get it fair. Mm. Like it was, it was impossible. So fast, and the guy, <laughs> like what? And then you're gonna throw like curveball. Here's a changeup. Like no, it's gonna be ugly. Uh, I'll I'll pass on that. I'll I'll take football just because again, there's there's other teammates. Like I got one solo job. Anyways, um, <laughs> good I, discussion. That was a good question. Yeah, I think I think yeah, mine is. If you put it to a vote, and I'm, I'm going to do a poll later on which one you can do easier. I think the baseball one is going to lose, but people got to think about that, man. Again, we are both, we are all <laughs> in agreement that both are impossible. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, I think if you gave me batting practice, I could absolutely put balls in play. But like, you know, what they're throwing like 75 in batting practice. Mm-hmm. Like I'm saying like, you know. Get the cage is up. You know. I have a hard. Nope. En- I have a hard enough time get, putting the ball in play in sixteen inch. So, oh, me too. <laughs> it's a little, I mean, it's it's like the sixteen inch of major league baseball <laughs> batting practice. Uh, we'll take a break and then we'll talk about the guys that uh, you know, batting practice and hitting home runs. It's a home run derby. Maybe one of these guys will c- compete in the home run derby. Uh, where's the All Star game in twenty twenty three? Seattle. Seattle. Ooh, nice spot. Um, want to let you know about FOCO. I'm going to take a quick eye break here. Chicago, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite teams. That's us, CHGO. So get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the living room, north or south side, with hoodies, slipper signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leaders in sports merch and collectibles. FOCO, that's F-O-C-O. If you're looking for the perfect gift for the football fan in your life, FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. Check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Promo code CHGO for 10% off. Also want to let you know about DraftKings Sportsbook, our presenting sponsor, and they have some fantastic promos going on. It is March Madness. we got the tournament going on. Play-in games are happening right now. They have futures for whoever will cut down the nets in early April um, and obviously Thursday and Friday are the games so why not sit in front of a TV call off from work and uh, play some bets with DraftKings Sportsbook download the app now and sign up with code CHGO new customers can bet five dollars and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly only at DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA with code CHGO minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply see show notes for details all right so these guys were probably if we asked them like if we asked Aloy Jimenez the question like Throw a football ten yards or hit a baseball. I think he'd probably say hit a baseball. He's quite good at the latter. So, he is. Yeah. Um, most of the guys that we're going to be talking about are, are pretty good at baseball and hitting the baseball. Um, we're going to be predicting who has the most home runs in twenty twenty three. We've already done most hits for the White Sox in twenty twenty three. Most stolen bases for the White Sox in twenty twenty three. Also did uh, innings pitched and uh, well, I was going to say saves. Stri- saves. saves. I was going to say strikeouts. Uh, saves. So let's continue this little series here, and we'll go into home runs. Last year, the leader for the White Sox, Andrew Vaughn, with 17. 
Aloy Jimenez with 16 in only 84 games. Jose Abreu, 15. Gavin Sheets, 15. A.J. Pollock, 14. Luis Robert Jr., 12. Yon Moncada, 12. And Elvis Andrews, uh, in the aggregate of his Oakland and White Sox games, 17 home runs. Uh, nine with the White Sox in 43 games. Uh, what do we make of last year? Now, looking back at it, is it an anomaly? Is it... Now, the baseline, like, do we expect the White Sox to have one player reach 17 home runs in 2023? I would hope so. That that last year was just the oddest year of all time for everything that was involved, except for Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease pitched <laughs> how we thought he was going to pitch. Liam Hendricks was Liam Hendricks. But otherwise, a lot of other people on the team didn't do their jobs, and some of it wasn't necessarily their faults because injuries and all the rest of that stuff, but... I would bet money. I wish that uh, DraftKings had a bet where you can bet will any White Sox hit over 17 because I would pound that immediately, whatever the odds on that were, because they're going to do that no matter what this year because of the team is just too talented to go how they went last year. Just by happenstance, you had Andrew Vaughn, who played most of the games, hit 17, and I thought that was an under- uh, achievement for him because he had what well Jose had like 15 coming into August or go, leaving August and he just stayed there for the rest of the time I think Andrew Vaughn ran out of fuel at the end of the season too I think he can at minimum hit 25 home runs this year as far as the full team will I pick seven guys to hit 20 home runs like I did last year no I've learned my <laughs> lesson could they yeah hell yeah I mean that's it's not far from thinking that the White Sox will hit and have like five to six, seven guys hit over 20 home runs because they have the power to do that. But if I had to pick the person who's going to hit the most home runs, it's Aloy Jimenez. That's obvious. Now, can he be healthy to hit those home runs? That's the question. And the answer to this question, you know, of who's going to hit the most is probably an easy one for all of us, Aloy Jimenez. But you look back to last year and you are hesitant to predict anything in this department. I mean, um, I, I have to believe that it was an anomaly, but boy, what a wild anomaly it was that all of those players who, listen, Herb, we have joked throughout for the last year about that prediction we made last year, six, seven guys going to hit 20 home runs. But there's a reason we did that. And these are those same players for the most part. Um, obviously, no Jose Abreu, and he's quote-unquote replaced with uh, a guy in Andrew Benintendi who's not known for that power. Um, I mean, heck, in 2021, A.J. Pollock hit 20 homers, didn't he? So I think we were riding, uh, riding high on that one, too. But um, it's outrageous that the power went out the way it did last year because this was a team that was based upon hitting, built upon hitting home runs. You know, Sean, you always make fun of Rick Hahn for saying ball go far, team go far. Uh, it's it's something he says because it's what it's supposed to happen, right? And all that stuff last year that came up, the the base running blunders, the defensive mistakes, uh, the, you know, uh, all, all the stuff, uh, you know, all the strikeouts and all that stuff that, that drove people insane throughout the whole season – it was supposed to be covered up by the fact that they were going to be a home run hitting machine. And what did the White Sox do this offseason? They placed their faith in basically that exact same collection of players and said, listen, 2022 was horrible. It was massively disappointing. Everybody there was calling it embarrassing, but they still think these guys can do the same things that they thought they could do a year ago before last season started. Um, we have reason now to temper some expectations perhaps, but... These are still those same players with those same uh, level of potential. And, Sean, as you were listing the other day, with full health all the way around. Now, again, if this is baseball, that can change in an instant. But right now, there's really no uh, reasons to be concerned about any of the position players and their health. I think when you look ahead, really the only guy that you could think of maybe like, ooh, what's going to happen on the health front, I, I would say maybe Yasmani Grandal. And maybe Andrew Vaughn, considering he's now told us in back-to-back -back seasons that he ran out of gas toward the end of the toward the end of the year, is he going to be able to figure out how to avoid to do doing that this time around? But for the most part, the guys who were on the injured list over and over again last year, be it Aloy, Luis Robert, uh, uh, T.A., or, or even um, uh, Moncada, yeah. uh, they're healthy. 
They're fully healthy, and so they should be expected to do the kinds of things, maybe not the uh, outrageous things that we were, were thinking about a year ago where we're talking about MVPs all over the place, but they should be expected to be the kind of hitters that can power an offense that was expected to be. And I know Andrew and Luis's situations are a little bit different, but I would still throw Luis in that, that category just because he's never played 100 games in his career before. Okay. Um, uh, it's 56 out of 60 in 2020. He was very healthy that year, so not but a only, lot of concerns. But, but terrible for half of that season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, looked like he could have had the uh, rookie of the year, but then just stopped being good at baseball. Mm -hmm. um, where's Kyle Lewis now? Uh, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> like, Luis Roberts still has a little bit more potential. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, 2021, 68 games, 2022, uh, 98. You'd like to see Luis Robert pl uh, play uh, 100 games. And if he could, I, I I wouldn't be shocked if he leads the White Sox in home runs. We haven't seen a fully healthy, uh, mature Luis Robert Jr. in 120-plus games because we've seen him get really, really hot. He got really hot August 12th to the end of the year in 2021. He was red hot to start his career as well. Um, was great in the postseason as well. Mike Fires can tell you how good Luis Robert Jr. is. Um, and even last year in 2022, uh, before that injury, he was really getting geared up um, in, in August. So we don't know what a fully healthy, full head of steam Luis Robert Jr. looks like. Um, so I, I just toss him in, into that category as well. I'd say there are three guys that are legitimate contenders for this crown. I think we're probably all going to say Aloy, but I think there are three guys that you could pick from. Aloy, Luis Robert Jr., and Andrew Vaughn, I think, are the three guys who have the ability to lead this team in home runs this year. And I know Sean is going to bristle at this one, as he did in pregame or pre-show. Don't leave out my man Yasmani Grandel. No, Don't on. leave him out. Come on, man. His isolated power is around 200 for his career. His uh, slugging, I think, is at about 450 for his career. Last year was a was an anomaly for everybody, including him, where he's injured. And I know he was injured with back and knee injuries. But he's been working with the Blackhawks. He's looking good in spring training. I think that Yasmani Grandal, with a full year of health, maybe 120, 130 games, can hit you 30 home runs. We saw the 23 in 93 games. He can do that. He can produce those type of numbers again. If he's healthy. All right, Herb, let's let's do it then. What are we going to say this year for the number of players on this White Sox team that are going to hit 20 or more home runs? Who do you, how many you got? All right. Who do you got? Well, hold on. We have to redeem ourselves from last year, Sean, so we've got yeah, to make yeah. this prediction again. Yes, we do. <laughs> Just Yasmani Grandal, real quick. He hit five last year. Yeah. Yasmani Grandal will hit over 20 home runs in 2023. You think so? Yep. Mm -hmm. 34 years old. Full, uh, with all of his injury look issues. Look at the full seasons. I, Last two full seasons, right? Over my, 20 my, home runs. But my question is, again, it, can he even play a full season? What is his health going to be like? I'm really glad that he's coming into the year healthy. But, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it, it only takes one swing, one tweak, and, you know, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen my uncles go down with back pain. I, I know how bad it is. You're, like, you're pro-athlete uncles? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, it, it just it, – all humans are humans. Backs are backs. They're frail. <laughs> yeah, but do your uncles go to – Exhaustion to passing out when they no, work out. No, but I don't. Is has that been proven to be good? No, like, no. Like why? why no, we, we don't, is no. Yaz Monte Grandal a doctor? He's a crazy person, right? Doctor Yaz. So he might work himself to a little bit past uh, exertion, a little bit, uh, you know, too far. I don't know if that's if that's health. I, I'm not going to say I know what health, healthy is, but also I don't know. I'm just a little bit concerned. I'm not going to be so gung ho. A Twenty is a lot. I understand that you know. He did it in 2021, but, or, yeah, he did it in 2021, but. Um, and did it the year before he came for the White Sox, too. Yeah, I, do you, you, do you think he's going to hit 20? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He needs to. I mean, he needs to stay healthy for his next contract. Secondly, he's healthy right now, and I don't see, foresee anything stopping him from being healthy. And I know back injuries flare up from time to time, but it seems like this uh, coaching staff has a good uh, grasp on when you get him in, when he went out, the availability of the, the designated hitter, maybe some first base to take him off his knees every, every once in a while. I think he understands his body and knows how to get himself prepared for a game. And that's why the White Sox picked him up initially because, yeah, he had injuries in the past, but he played and he posted most of the time with the Milwaukee Brewers and such like that. And so, Sean, that, that not a doctor comment cuts both ways too. 
I mean, you're not a doctor, right? No, right, I'm, right, I'm yeah, not a doctor either, either, right? So yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you can, <laughs> you can, you can be very skeptical. Like, oh, we we don't know right. what his status is going to be or what he can what he can handle behind the plate. I think we're all waiting to find that out. To find out is everything that he is everything that he dealt with a year ago actually behind him, or are there going to be residual effects? We don't know, but I don't think you can uh, project. That he is well, going to, that he is, that he isn't healthy, or that he won't be healthy. And I don't like w- want to. I would. M- my hope for all of these White Sox players are for them to play as many games as possible, be healthy, and I would love to see Yasmani Grandal play in 120 games, be that catcher that they signed, and I would love to see him go for 30 home runs because you know 2021 he had an ISO of 280, like you know he was hitting a home run basically every single game at the end of the year. I I would love to see him healthy and and smashing the ball. I just have concerns because again, 93 games games in 2021 90 games in 2022 just what what can his body actually with 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 stand uh at, at 34 with all the injuries that he's gone through i'm hoping the best but i i don't know if i can give him 20 just because he might not even play 100 games yeah. um but that's you you guys will include yasmani you already said luis andrew Aloy. i think those guys get to 20 um yes. with with full health um who else do we want to add or is are those the four that will reach 20. Well, then I think there's probably three maybes, right? Yeah. And those three maybes are T.A., Yoan Moncada, and Oscar Colas. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, feel free to flash the uh, the projections from uh, Steamer. Uh, is this Steamer? No, I'm sorry. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is Steamer. Uh, 31 projected home runs for Eloy Jimenez, 24 for Luis Robert Jr., 23 for Andrew Vaughn, uh, 17 for Moncada, Anderson, and Colas. So that's why you, you mentioned so this, Colas. This, this computer says three. This computer yeah, thinks yes. there'll be three. Okay. But, but the yeah. computer six, six reaching last year's leader. Sure. Or, or more. What I got to say about the computer, I saw uh, the games for Aloy Jimenez. It was like 140 games. And if he plays 140 games, he's not only hitting 31 home runs. Like, he's hitting much more home runs than that. So that's low on his part. Same thing with Robert and Vaughn. They had a full season of home runs, or of health, on the, with that projection. It was very low for me. So I would say those three... If they have health, guaranteed are going to hit over or twenty home runs. Jimenez, Robert, and Vaughn. I would put Yasmani up there too. I think he's going to do it. And Colas, he's been looking good in the spring. Will that transfer into the regular season when they're actually got a game plan versus him and he has to adjust to what pitchers are doing to him? I don't know, but he has the power. That's undoubtedly. I think I would add one more to that list I, I, to, of my four. So, so I would say a total of five. For 20 or more. For 20 or more. Uh, and I personally am feeling good about Yoan Moncada right now. Um, I think that he uh, is, I mean, everybody's seeing what he's doing in the World Baseball Classic. Obviously, you, don't, you can't say that that's going to be exactly replicated. But I think you have a lot more confidence watching him do that in that setting than you would if he was doing it in the Cactus League. Um where a guy like Oscar Colas is having some success, uh, I, I think that I think that Moncada, uh, you know, is showing up healthy this time around. He talked about changing the way he worked out this off season, and hey, there's something about the guy uh, whose locker was right next to Jose Abreu, saying, th- you know, recognizing maybe a little bit more than everybody else that 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 production that lost production needs to be made up. So um, I think Yoan Moncada uh, could have a very nice season. Uh, I don't see T.A. necessarily hitting for that much power. I'm not saying he can't. He very well could. Mm -hmm. But I think you just stick with what you got. You stick with what's working for you. And I think him in that leadoff spot, just knocking that ball to right field over and over and over again is extraordinarily beneficial to the White Sox. You just keep that going. And then just to wrap it up, Colas, I just think there is going to be an extended period of struggle for a rookie in Major League Baseball. It happens all the time with just about everybody that comes up from the minor leagues. He could be ahead of most rookies. He could be the rookie of the year, but it doesn't mean that he won't have a whole month where where pitchers have got him figured out and he's going to struggle to hit the ball out of the park. Well, and whenever Tim plays 120 games or more, he has a floor of 17 home runs. Uh, 146 games in 2017, 17 home runs. 2018, 153 games, 20 home runs. 2019, 123 games, 18 home runs. 2021, 123, 17 home runs. So, I think that he could definitely do it. It's just, you know, he, he loves to go in opposite field. Um, and, Keep doing and it. We saw, it we works. Saw, <laughs> it's got the pop to do it, too. But we saw the balls be deadened. And that's the one thing, too, with the White Sox. Like, last year, 
power all around Major League Baseball was down. In 2021, the White Sox were 19th in baseball with 190 home runs. Last year, they were 22nd with 149 home runs. 21 Major League teams had 150 home runs last year, and I think what it was 100, uh, 20 hit 190 in 21. So there's a, a, a huge difference there. And power was out all around the league. I have questions about the baseball. I have questions, obviously, about the players, um, just with health. But I feel if they're healthy, I would probably say um, Tim, Colas, Vaughn, Robert, Aloy. I'll, I'll, that's my five. So you don't, you don't, you're not believing in Johan either. I am, and I was going to bring up his crazy stats from the World Baseball crazy Classic. Crazy stats. So, uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, it was an important game for Cuba. Do or die. Got to win or go home. They're in the elimination round. Yeah. And won 4-3. Yohan Moncada, their two-hitter. What did he do today? Did he get out? No, no. Of course not. He went two for two with two hard-hit baseballs, 97 and 103, a single and a double, and two walks. He's looking pretty He's damn good. Doing well. He scored if, two runs, if, if too. If uh, scored a run. Uh, let me see. I know he scored at least one run. Him and uh, Luis Roberts scored in the same single. But uh, man, yeah. one run for one run for Mancato, one run for Luis. He's looking really nice. So if he can uh, continue this, I hope he only has one more game so we can get him out of uh, that World Baseball Classic healthy, happy, and he actually produced. It had a good time and can take that into um, spring training baseball into the regular season. I don't care about if Cuba has a success in the actual World Baseball Classic. Get my I think man you back. want him to keep rolling. Get my man don't back. Break the streak, right? No, yeah. bring my man back. I have got, a three for four day and bring him back. I have never seen uh, Wolf of Wall Street, um, but I just know that one scene where what? he's like, I'm not fucking leaving. That is Team Cuba in Miami. Yeah. This is the first time they're going to ever play in Miami. Oof. You think Lone Depot Park has ever been louder? Aaron Judge was hitting home runs during a thunderstorm during the home run derby. That place will not be louder than when Cuba steps foot in there. Yohan Moncada, Luis Robert, it might be, they're be gonna, It might oh, be Cuba versus Puerto Rico. Or Cuba, Cuba versus D Dominican Republic. I'm just saying. Puerto like, Rico stinks. The, the, the atmosphere would be a bunch of Cuban people, a bunch of Dominican people, <laughs> a bunch of American people. It'd be fun. A bunch Sounds of fun. Japanese people there. Just like excitement. And that's the perfect city because you could tell the Arizona crowd is sleepy. The games are sleepy. Miami. It's Miami. It's The city is already electric and the stadium is also too. Sean, if you had asked about 99% of human beings, where is Lone Depot Park? Before, before this show, I would have imagined they all would have gotten it wrong. Uh, we should do. Oh, maybe that's going to be tomorrow's thing. It's right uh, by Calle Ocho. I'm gonna don't go home, and uh, we're gonna see uh, tomorrow's quiz is gonna be. Can you name all 30 MLB parks? Ooh, yes. Boy. Um, off, you probably name two with the current with the current uh, current sponsors. names. Current yeah. names. And see, don't the go off season's and, tough. The off season's tough because they might have changed. Well, one. If, yeah. if that happens, we'll I'll 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 okay. give them to you. You'll honor the 2022 yeah. name if you don't remember. <laughs> you know. Ali. Chrysler Stadium or whatever. Ali. I think the best we'll the best out. question is if this actually happens tomorrow, will we remember Lone Depot Park? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember it because I was in Miami. Have you guys gone uh, to Miami? I have. I was just down the street from that stadium. We went to Calle Ocho. That's how I know it's right close to it. Nice. It's a nice city. It's enjoyable. I would not li want to live there. Rains well, too much and it's way too damn hot. And that, Blake Dame brings up a good point. Will, will you guys just say Miller Park? Do you know the, the action? Yes. Hey, it's all, it'll always be Miller Park to me. It's American it Family Insurance. I was about to say, I was about to sing it. Okay, I only know it because I could sing that one. Yeah, um, yeah it's like Sears Tower. You're going to call it that all the time. That's Even though it's also just a corporation's name. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, if, like, you keep on telling, like, well, Wrigley Field's not a part of the corporations. Like, if they change the name, I'm going to still call it Wrigley Field. Right. It's all corporations now own b baseball parks, pretty much, exclusively. Except for the Bears, of course. <laughs> but that's going to happen. Way. And that's, that's definitely going to change. Yankee oh, Stadium. Fenway, Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. um, we got three of them. Dodger. We're out. Dodger Stadium. Singular. Angel. Angel Stadium. Angel Stadium, yeah. I'm um, sure that's something else, though. Okay, now I'm giving you guys too many of these. No, I think it well, is still Angel Stadium. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Camden in the Arts? Yeah. Yeah. But isn't it Cam something at Camden? Oriole Park at okay. Camden in the Arts. All right, yeah. never mind. Um, and yes, Himothy, this is live. We see you. Hi. What um, is that actual um, Oakland thing? That will be the trouble. Oh, God. I remember, remember it was O.co, but I don't know what it is. I know it's the Elkland Cal uh, Alameda Coliseum back in the day. It might be that again. It's like a new name every it's, year. Yeah. <laughs> Failing crypto <company> .com <laughs> Park. 
<laughs> FTX, we're all going to go to prison.com. <laughs> um, I do want to share one more thing, uh, Sarah, if you want to flash the uh, projections again. Uh, these are the uh, Steamer projections. There's also the Zips projections, uh, so a different computer program. Uh, this one has Aloy Jimenez and Luis Robert Jr. and Andrew Vaughn with 31, 24, and 23, respectively. Zips have a, a little bit differently. They have Vaughn leading what? with 28 home runs. Aloy Jimenez with 23 home runs and Oscar Colas with 21 home runs. Wow. Luis Robert in second or in fourth with 18, but they only have him projected to play 104 games. Right. So they're projecting um, injuries. This computer project, is yes. projecting injuries. So, yes. so oh. it's a, a little bit different. I mean, I think Aloy would be um, healthy probably. How many games Vaughn. does that computer project 30. for Aloy? Oh, uh, there's a 30 game difference between Vaughn and, and Jimenez, 140 to 110. I mean, Computer's being rational. Well, it's take right. But if he plays it's the, a, com- a computer, the computer's doing what a computer does yeah. and taking the data from before because Aloy Jimenez has been hurt in every season that he's played. Uh, but again, you cannot you cannot project that someone is going to get hurt. I think Max said it earlier. It's like you can't project injuries and you can't project home runs. Both happen. There is up there. Max Mas- Masquela. Projecting the injury is the same as projecting home runs. You just truly... Won't know until it happens. Very so. true. That's actually the case for projecting anything. Yeah, that's yes. true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> even the weather. That's why Especially I, the weather. Weather, yeah, weather may not get it right. I, uh, well, I'm not, I don't well, have you. WGN right now because of reasons. Um, I miss Tom Skilling because all these weather people have been wrong on this winter, man. They'd be like, well, this storm is going to be for seven to eight, eight inches. I look outside, a flurry. Little little snow. I'm, I'm I'm sure that Tom Skilling's like, no, I ain't gonna do you no snow. I don't want to tempt Sh- Chicago weather, but like, yeah, th- this has been a very easy winter. Awesome. Keep going. We know that winter is not over until Memorial Day, so oh, you know, guys seriously there's knock gonna, on some wood somewhere, please. It's the Ides of March, and there's gonna be 15 <laughs> inches of snow tomorrow. Um, you knocked on wood already. Yeah, I had to. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna. We're out here tempting fate. <laughs> um, the snow gods. You're about. gonna get. They're gonna be. Six, oh, we're gonna be six snow outs between April and May alone. <laughs> um, I do want to just share a, a little bit more on Andrew Vaughn's Zips projections. Uh, this is from Dan Zimborski. Dan uh, made the Zips projections, and he wrote up an article about players he likes. Andrew Vaughn was one of them, and he shared the percentiles for the White Sox. We know a lot about percentiles and how the White Sox uh, didn't really live up their projections, their Zips projections, and they were more of a a 20 to 10 percentile team last year. Andrew Vaughn's 50th percentile is that 28 home run stat that I saw. uh, That's 50 percentile? Yeah. that's Holy hell. Um, and Look at Dan Zamborski, Sean Anderson, and staring the same brain. A 50 percentile season for Andrew Vaughn in 2023 is projected to look like 28 home runs, 28 home runs, or 28 doubles, 28 home runs, uh, 267 batting average, 336 OBP, uh, 482 slug, uh, a 124 OPS plus, a two war season. Um, this is this is if he half asses it. This is saying. yeah. This is if he half asses it. Um, a, a full ass, hard ass season <laughs> from Andrew 60 Vaughn. Homers, uh, thirty eight doubles, forty six home runs, one hundred and thirty, uh, one hundred and seventy three OPS plus, and one annoying Sean Anderson. Oh my god! If, if, I don't think I don't think you'd be that annoying because I think you'd be passed out on the floor. Oh my god! If well, he hit forty six home runs, we wouldn't be able to fit in Studio B. Sean's head would be <laughs> filling up the whole damn thing and be a lot of told you so's. Be pointing straight at the camera. Hey, remember you said this, that, and the other? Now what? Look oh at me. Boy. Look at me and my man AV. Hey, it's it's him. I'm just I'm happy someone's someone's hitting home runs. But still, 60th percentile, 30 home runs, 70th percentile, 32 home runs, 80th percentile, 36 home runs, 90th percentile, 41, 95th percentile, 46. Is that gonna happen? No. But if he has an above average season, a 10% above average season, um, that's a 30-30 season for Andrew Vaughn. That's pretty good replacement for Jose Abreu. And if that happens, they're, they're fine to let the $20 million first baseman who's 36 year old, years old walk away. Oh, that, this is the I told you so that he's working yeah. up to. It's, it's the that third. He's working up to. So it hasn't Jesus. even been about Sean likes Vaughn. Oh, it's God. Just, this is all full circle on Sean hates Abreu. <laughs> 30 home runs doubles, you're saying, not 30 stolen bases for Andrew Vaughn. Not 30, no, 30, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. I was making 30, sure. 30 doubles, 30 home runs. It's like uh, Dan Zaborski's drinking something out there. Speedy. <laughs> Speedy. Andrew Vaughn would be drinking My something. My man, Matthew He's Cortese is going bags. crazy over here. Hey, to your fingertips to these actual players' uh, 
home run totals. 37 for Aloy. I can see that happen. Vaughn with 30. Yaz with 28. Decent. 27 for Luis. Oscar Colas with 25. Yoan with 23. And Elvis Sanders with 21. Continuing the power stroke from last year. This I is love the you, guy, Cortese. let's remember, this is the guy who predicts a no-hitter every, every day. game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It didn't happen last year, Matthew. You came really close, though. But we weren't broadcasting that day when Dylan Cease almost threw his no-no. Oh, boy. He'll, he'll, he'll get it right one day. Um, one day. Uh, one day he's going to he's gonna be able to say, I told you so. Uh, career high for Elvis Andres was 20 in 2017. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. He hit 17 last year, so uh, it's not crazy. Um, and, and I agree, blank name. Jose who? Um, <sighs> wow. My God, my goodness. <laughs> Time for your pick of the week. What was he doing? The, what was he doing yesterday too? He was like really low playing Paul Canerco. Also, like he's just out there to just make everyone mad at him, I think. Yep. <laughs> Next I feel like back, I already do that. Probably like Mark Burley. What was he even good? <laughs> oh, stop. Don't do it. I said he never uh, embodied the White Sox or something like that. <laughs> About Paul Canerco. Mark Burley. Oh um, my god. That he was my favorite player and that he was a lefty, but he he never like was like the vibe of the team. But, he, I mean, that's fair. He's like an Andrew Benatendi. He wasn't, like, the most vocal. Oh, my God. No. Oh, it could be no. wrong. No. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. seemed like he didn't really like, want the, the will, jersey retirement people situation. People will die for Mark Burley. Die for Mark Burley. If Mark Burley came back to Com- Comiskey, guaranteed rate, whatever they call it, fans would bow down to him every single time they get the chance to see him. Mark Burley's one of my favorite players. If you ask this, uh, people who are watching right now, people who are listening on the podcast, if you put a top five together, I'm sure like a majority of the people would say Mark Burley is part of that top five. And uh, thanks to Jared. He said, I finished yesterday's pod and Sean couldn't have shown his age Very anymore. True. Very uh, true. Hey, all right. Uh, I'm young. Uh, is that Jared, are you holding Sean in your picture right there? <laughs> <laughs> holding a little, kid, a little guy there. Uh, Got to let you know about nope, DraftKings. Too cute. <laughs> too kid. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. You're all good. Uh, Got to let you know about DraftKings Pick of the Week. Uh, on the show today on CHGO Bets Daily, uh, Cody and I, our show bet is Texas Southern Moneyline. It is the play-in game for the NCAA tournament, the 16 seeds. And Texas Southern has been there, done that. Who are they playing? Uh, oh, that's a great question. Texas Southern is playing uh, my people from Fairleigh Dickinson uh, out of Hackensack, New Jersey. Do it, Vinny. Do it to them. I mean, they're not all the way Dickinson. They're just fairly Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and they so stink at basketball, too. Uh, we're going to take Texas Southern because uh, Johnny Jones, been there, done that. Uh, he won in 2020. Him and the Texas Southern Tigers uh, won by nine uh, in their playing game in 2021, and they won by eight in their playing game last year. Uh, so two straight years they've been in this game and won it. You know, Fairy Dickinson didn't even win their conference tournament. Mm-hmm. His conference. It's just one guy. <laughs> just one guy. Just to send out there like uh, Robert Morris. Um, but Miramac was in their fourth year of being eligible for Division One, so they have dumbass rules. But they're not eligible for the actual NCAA tournament, but they can play in the co- conference tournaments. Like, don't let them play in the conference tournament if you're not going to let them play in the real one. The team that won the conference tournament is not a D1 team. They are a D1 team, but they're early. They're like in the fourth year of being D1. You got to play some pittance and be in probation huh. for four years or some very dumb stuff. NCAA is dumb. They are dumb. Uh, James Madison was uh, was real good in the football side, and they, they had to deal with that crap too. Um, you know, poor teams. Another one guy. <laughs> Another one guy. <laughs> they named a whole street after him. It's right out there. Um I want to let you know, too, about Game Time. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And, hey, uh, we're going to be talking about the promotions deals for the White Sox coming up. Uh, Some nice game or nice promotions for Tuesday night. So uh, you might be able to score some great tickets on game time and also take advantage of the great promotions at the park the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you never thought you could buy whether it be behind home plate uh, in your nice 161 maybe maybe you like the upper deck and want to try the new decks out at guaranteed rate field Um, game time is the best place for the best deal it was guaranteed it was created by the fans for the fans and they guarantee the lowest price and if you love chgo then you'll love game time the best way to support us is by buying your tickets to the link in the description join over 15 million people have downloaded the game time app it's the best seats to all your favorite events. Also want to let you know about Pins and Aces. Uh, hopefully it doesn't snow 15 inches so you can go and hit the links. Pins and Aces is the official golf apparel partner of CHGO. We love our Pins and Aces gear here and our guy Steven, who is our resident golfer, our typical producer for CHGO White Sox, get tons of compliments on his Pins and Aces apparel on and off the course. You ever f- walk down the street with Steven? 
It's just, hey, nice, looking Literally. good, nice shirt, looking good, nice pants. Is my that P&A? My goodness. Little pins and aces? You can't uh, even walk down the street with the guy. <laughs> no, uh, people hound them. Uh, they're a family-owned golf and apparel <laughs> business, and they make amazing polos, hats, golf bags, and even our favorite beer sleeve, an innovative product that allows you to store seven beers right inside your golf bag and keep your drinks cold the entire round. So check out pinsandaces.com and use code CHGO to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pinsandaces.com. Um, okay, let's jump into the promotions. Uh, Tuesdays are going to be a fun night to be a White Sox fan. Uh, they are bringing back Southside Mondays. Uh, they will be wearing the Southside jerseys on Monday. And now Tuesday, new for 2023, $5 Tuesday. Uh, they got f- menu items that will be $5 on Tuesdays. You get $5, 16-ounce uh, Miller Lite and uh, what is that? Modelo, right? Modelo Draft? Yes. Um, $5 uh, oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, Vienna beef hot dogs, uh, $5 uh, popcorn. Hey, don't forget the Polish. Oh, or $5 Polish. My Polish. bad. My, my eyes are bad today. Um, <laughs> $5 Coke products, $5 nachos, and $5 beggar, beggars pizza slice. Uh, you can keep the beggars just because that, that shit's way too hot for me. Uh, oh, Sean. But uh, mm. They lay it on thick. Yeah. It was about <laughs> that going, south side love. But, but if I'm going to a, a baseball game, I am going to get a hot dog. They're yeah. the same price. Or a Polish. Yeah, pizza That's is kind of weird. I, I, I will mean, say this. In the ballpark, I'm not so hot on the beggar's pizza. If you go to beggar's pizza, I love a beggar's pizza. Love it in, in the restaurant. Or if you're lucky enough to go to the Guaranteed Rate Club or any of the suites, they have beggar's pizza too, and I've tried it at the actual ballpark in the stand that's in right field. Not as good as the one that they have for the uh, the highfalutin guest in the Guaranteed Rate <laughs> Club. I was like, man, what is this? Are you special pizza? It's like, it's no, got a that's, different oven, I'm no, sure. No, that is Begar's Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. I was like, this is delicious. Because I had Beggar's Pizza for like every home was a, every away game for the White Sox for like five years because they used to bring it in for the score. And after a while, I was like, nah, I'm good. But yeah, t- tasting at the guarantee rate, a little bit better. And as Vinny says, at the actual restaurant, much better. Yes. I also just think this is this is a, a really good deal. Oh, I mean, 100%. again, you know, concessions prices at stadiums That's are just like out of control. A great but like deal. Relative to yeah. what you would be paying normally, oh this is a great, great deal. A beer? For five bucks? Jeez. That's like a third of the price yeah, of a beer. Literally. Literally. I mean, that's you, only five times the what you Sean went to pay for the college kids. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I, I, I mean, we were just at the United Center. It was sixteen bucks for you know, sixteen gooses. bucks for a beer. Ridiculous. So I said I could get food and a beer for the same Ten. price as an actual beer, like at Wrigley, where it's sixteen dollars or whatever. Right. And you can Mercy. see a better team too. <laughs> you see um, the one thing I, I just want to mention too, um, it would be nice for them to pay the vendors. Hopefully you don't have to deal with another strike. They were just dealing with that United center. They dealt with it at the uh, end of the season as well. Zach Hayes over at Southside Sox covered that um, the, the strike. Um, hopefully we don't have to deal with that because uh, you know, I mean, it's, that's such a horrible place to put fans because obviously we want to go and support the team. Um, but we also don't want to be supporting an organization that's not supporting its, its workers. Um, so you know, hopefully that doesn't happen and they can get that all ironed out because uh, it, that, that's been a frustrating situation to watch. Um, you know, I, it, it's great that this is a promotion, um, but even then too, like $5 for Coke, like you, I go into the Jewel, I, I scoff when it's seven ninety nine for uh, three three twelve packs because it's like the sale is $1 off. Usually it's eight ninety nine. Like what? Like for a 12 pack of pop? Like, I, I don't know. Usually the sales are... $4.99 for a three pack. Now 2023 at seven ninety nine. What the hell is going on with this? Wow, world? Sean's, got, Sean's got something against the jewels, it sounds like too. <laughs> I got something against corporations, baby. <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks like uh Jared. I think the only game that is not available is versus the Cubs game. July twenty sixth. Okay, but that makes otherwise, sense. every Tuesday, go out to a ball game. That's it's a smart thing for the White Sox to do. It's probably their least populated game is the Monday and or Tuesday games. So you need to get a some customers out there when it's not the team actually having them uh, spend their hard air and cash because Tuesday is a weird night for people to go out to the ballpark. I will, I will say this. Everybody, obviously, it's always a uh, hot topic what the attendance is at, uh, on the south side, and everybody asks me about, you know, what do you, what do you see in terms of trends, in terms of what makes people come out, what doesn't. The number one thing that dictates how many people are going to be in the ballpark is the day of the week that the game is played. Saturday and Sunday, there's never any problem with attendance. 
and to Monday and Tuesday they could be playing. Uh, you know, it, they well, could be in first place, and they could be playing a team in first place, and it'll it could be a desert just because people don't usually go out on Monday and Tuesday. So good thing to get people out to the ballpark on Monday and Tuesday. We saw September nineteenth, twenty twenty first, or twenty twenty one, twenty two, um, when they were playing the Guardians, and it was a huge game for the White uh-huh. Sox in twenty twenty two. 20,000 people, you know, it, it wasn't a crazy packed night, very roomy, very spacious. You can move down to the 100 level. Wasn't a problem. I, I, I hope that, you know, you get a good game and good promotions and that brings more people in because in an atmosphere like that, where they need to win, it would be great to have a world baseball classic well, environment, but Hey, but it's especially, like, you know, come on, during the summer, the kids don't right. go to school the next day, get them out to the ballpark uh, on a, and here's the thing too. You go on a Tuesday, you go on a Monday, you go on a Wednesday, probably more room for you. <laughs> yeah, and I think also this is maybe proud of the what Rick Hahn said, what kind of uh, winning back trust of the fans through promotions like this. You know, it's not a dollar, but five dollars for those items is pretty damn good, especially around the atmosphere. Relatively. Of all, yeah, <laughs> all the ballparks that are out there in the uh, place. I've seen none with five dollar beer except for pregame at Cleveland where you get a two dollar beer. But that's only pregame, and it's Cleveland, too. So right. cost of living is a little different. Yeah. Uh, well, I saw a TikTok. It was the about, home of uh, Ten Cent Beer Night. Yes. Cleveland. <laughs> I saw a TikTok about uh, food in Thailand. It's like you can get a, a full meal for $1.25. Um, so, yeah, it's all about cost of living and all that stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Mercy, you all good? You yeah. okay? okay? No, it's just a coffin. Okay. okay. We, just want, we just want to make sure you're good. Um, I'm not before, dying. Before I mean... We are all dying once we start oh. living, but, yeah. you know, not dying currently. 100%. Um, we're, we're all on that journey. Um, let's go to the uh, final thing here. Everybody loves promotions. Uh, there's a ton yeah. of jerseys as well. Uh, they listen to Yasmani Grandal. There's a basketball jersey. There's a football jersey. There's a Southside Irish jersey. Uh, but what people usually want are the bobbleheads. Uh, we got three bobbleheads that are currently announced. A nice Dylan Cease one in the 83 83 uniforms with the mustache. Uh, Hi, mom, talking bobblehead for Aloy. In That's the a good one. Road Grays, and then Luis Robert in the Southside uniforms. Uh, we got a favorite? It's more the Aloy one because it's more a specialized one. The other ones are just, you know, still versions of uh, them actually playing games. Aloy is a little different, and it's Aloy. I love the one with they gave away a couple of years ago, or maybe even last year, with the Aloy and Robert, where Aloy's just holding his hands together as the Robert takes the ball from him. But yeah, they should do more of these because these drive people to the ballpark no matter what. Even if they grabbing them and just turning right around and going back home, they're collectors' items. I still have my uh, Aloy uh, Robert thing, even though I'm not a bobblehead guy. These are things that will drive people to the uh, to the stadium for no no matter what. But also. Fix your damn thing, guaranteed rate. Because on these days where they give out the bobbleheads, lines forever. And people not getting to the game until the second inning when we had no pitch clock. Imagine. It's going to be the Good seventh point. inning when people get in uh, <laughs> with the same type of uh, lines that they do with a guaranteed rate. I just want them to streamline that or do a better job of getting people into the ballpark. Because it was just so ridiculous when they had to have those... Uh, special items and then people wouldn't get into the stadium at a time. I love the Aloy talking bobblehead is terrific. Uh, I mean, I like anything that's like a little goofy. I, you know what I mean? Like Kane guy was good. No, no, uh, yeah. no, uh, no slight to the Dylan bobblehead, which is, which is hilarious with the mustache. No slight to the Luis one. He's very cool with the chains and everything, but I like something that's a little unique, a little goofy. That's why the Aloy Robert one was so good last year. I still have my Hawk Harrelson alarm clock, from back in the day. Oh my I mean, God, I forgot about that. The, the, anything you can do to make it kind of a funny, goofy thing to give away, I'm all for it. And so a talking bobblehead is still a bobblehead. They could go in an even wackier direction, I'm sure, but uh, uh, keep keep the creativity coming. Do you still use it? Do I use it to wake up in the morning? No, I do not. Oh, <laughs> you should. I'll tell you what, Vinny, wake up. <laughs> we got to make a, Mercy. a Groundhog Day, but it's Vinny waking up with the yeah. Hawk Harrelson alarm clock. Uh, I'll t- I tell you what, Wimpy, it is time for the day. Does, does, he, <laughs> sing, does he sing Bob Dylan to you? No. Um, I though, think I got Sarah sick over there. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> the two that I was going to throw out, um, <laughs> Billy Hamilton, but roid it up and make it Billy the Hitter. Um, just like what if he had like Frank Thomas's like body, but like a Billy Billy the Hamilton's head. Um, that'd be I think that'd be funny. Or uh, why didn't they make a Lillary Legend one? I mean, he's going to be on the Hall of Fame ballot. 
everybody, if he if they had the pose where he's rounding first base after the home run, it's a sick bobblehead. Hey, he deserves hey. it. 2031. <laughs> the 10th anniversary of the uh, 21 division championship team. Maybe that's what you'll get. Okay. And also, read Vinny's article on allchgo.com. Hey, look at you. Because what a segue. He might not be here. Jeez. Your man. Leori, not me. Oh, not Vinny. No, <laughs> Leori. Sorry. Leori legend. Sorry. Yeah, Vinny's going to be here. Hopefully. Knock Her- on wood. Her- Herb is bringing Jeez. up, you know, we're all on our journey to death, and he's killing Leori Garcia. But also, I would like to have some... Uh, oh, sin- some synergy between the White Sox and the Blackhawks since Yasmani Grandal was doing all that training. Maybe some uh, pads with Yasmani Grandal. I think there's some a hockey. hockey. Is there a hockey jersey this year? Yeah. There was one last year. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's going to be a yeah. hockey jersey. I think it's another Southside one. Um, it might be similar to the one and from he, last year. But, yeah, they should make Yaz goalie bobblehead. And I think, like, you know how catchers used to transition from the regular traditional catcher mask to the hockey-style mask? I think uh, Yaz should have a uh, hockey-style mask this year. As a nod to his people who helped him get back on his feet. It'd be okay. sweet. And they should, he should have it, you know, like a, a hockey goalie design and everything. Yeah. You know, you can get the Cuba in there. You can get, like, maybe some Miami stuff in there. Get the U hidden in there. Just various socks strewn about. There mm-hmm. you go. Like yeah. it's laundry day. Like it's laundry um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I will say this, though. When it comes to promotions, the bobblehead are, are a hot item, no doubt about it. But there is perhaps no hotter item in terms of uh, – um, staying power than those sweatshirts when they give out they do a sweatshirt day usually every may april maybe early may and my god you see them around the city constantly the hood when they did the hoodies the crew neck ones still a fine product but have not uh, been spotted quite as often you still spot those those uh those hoodies that they gave out a few years ago everywhere north side south side west side doesn't matter they're all over the place i had the one where it was like all the names on the on the the chest that one was all right it was pretty thin um but the one that they do have uh it, i think it's uh it's it's the one to celebrate the 93 uh, oh, al west champs that's, that's a, a crew a so nice they're giving design. that out this year okay oh, yeah, yeah like so that. nice. that's one of the first promotions uh so there's a nice crew i think that's early april how so how badly uh, do you think they're gonna boo my man rob ventura is he coming back? I mean, are they honoring? On, the, it was on the ninety three team. Maybe they are. It's thirty thirtieth anniversary. Yeah, thirtieth anniversary. Um, that's gonna be Saturday, April fifteenth. Perfect time to come, for them to come back versus the Orioles. But I don't know. Robin might have like a final or two to take down at Oki State. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to coach the World Baseball Series. Our World Baseball. He's got to finish his degree down there. <laughs> Isn't he done it at this point? I thought he. Did I thought he I saw him. Did he graduate? I thought I saw him in a little cap and gown. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got to see uh, Frank t- One Dog return. Uh, Alex Fernandez, uh, Robin Ventura, Blackjack. That might go well. Alex um, Fernandez. Alex Fernandez, right? Jason oh. Bure. Jason Bure, Wilson Alvarez, uh, Joey Cora. La Chispa. Tim Raines. Ellis Burks. Yeah, should be fun. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for the uh, CHGO White Sox podcast. Uh, that's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter, um, again, at Vinny Duber. I think I just said that. You can read him on uh, at allchgo.com, uh, mainly about Leary Garcia fighting for that 26-man roster spot. Um, that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter, at Akramal23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. And I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter, at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. I'm the host of the CHGO White Sox podcast. Thank you to our guy, Matthew Cortez for the $5 Super Chat, uh, four $5 uh, White Sox Concession Tuesdays. Uh, hopefully we see you at the park again, Matthew Cortese, mm-hmm. on, a, on a nice $5 Tuesday. And thank you to Sarah Ficta for producing the show and for the entire uh, chat for hanging out with us. We will talk to you tomorrow, and it's going to be an early show at 11 a.m. Set your Hawk Harrelson alarm clocks. <laughs> Set your Hawk Harrelson alarm clocks. Vinny and Herb are going to name all 30 MLB parks. <laughs> we'll talk to you then.